Sheldon Mitsud did those files this morning. Velco is a non-profit organization that facilitates American companies in South America. All employees, lend me your full attention. Hey, it's Jesus. Your chance of survival increases by following my orders. Your task is simply this. Kill three of your co-workers, or we will kill six others. Hey, all the lines are dead. We need to evacuate the floor. Hey, Pete, come on, it's a joke, man. Hey, listen up, everybody. Whoever's doing this, they're having a little fun at our expense. <laughs> Stage one, commence. I guess head exploded from the inside. What? When we start working here, they put tracers in the back of our heads. You must not remove the tag from your body. Follow our directives, or we will detonate the explosive. Begin. I ain't melted at all. Do you know what kind of metal this is? I don't really know. to discuss all our options. We do not have the right to take innocent human lives. What are you doing? My wife and kids need me. Stage two, commence. We don't need no more weapons. We need to work together to get the hell out of here. In two minutes, we want 30 of you dead. If 30 of you are not dead, we will end 60 of your lives ourselves. I don't know about you, but almost every week now, I believe I am seeing a new TV show or a movie depicting the same theme of human blood sacrifice on a regular basis. It seems to be a prevailing theme in much of the media that we are being shown. And this new movie that just came out uh, about a few days ago called The Belco Experiment is yet again showing the same kind of thing. I really want to give a shout out to Brother Skylar Miller who informed me of this particular movie. He actually has his own website and a radio show called The War on Lucifer. Uh, the link here is below. I will leave the link to his website in the description box and he also has a radio show that I happen to have the pleasure of being on about a week or so ago we discussed the Kong movie and stuff like that but please do check out his website he's got a great ministry going and is doing some awesome work trying to help the truth movement and other truthers get the word out there along with his own work as well he is also doing a, a great job in getting the truth out to the masses but this movie, The Balco Experiment, as you saw the trailer for yourself there at the beginning of this video, again, the same kinds of themes being shown, uh, this bloodlust, this uh, blood bail practices, and, you know, according to the movie, it says on IMDb, in a twisted social experiment, 80 Americans are locked in their high-rise corporate office in Bogota, Colombia, and ordered by an unknown voice coming from the company's intercom system to participate in a deadly game of killed, or sorry, kill or be killed. So this is what is being shown here. Again, you saw the trailer for yourself, all out chaos, all out madness. And, you know, again, if you look at just the logo of this particular company, what do you see literally right in your face? Basically the all seeing eye. It is right there, complete Illuminati Luciferian agenda in our faces. So really this is a dead giveaway as to what is going on here, as to what kind of agenda is being played. I really believe we are being shown constantly as these bloodlust themes keep ramping up. I believe we are being shown the decay of human society as we know it, that things are just going down. It's, uh, Things are not looking good for the human race as we can see it because I believe the judgment of God is coming very, very soon. And, you know, I find it quite fascinating that the makers of this movie just happen to be the same makers as movies like The Conjuring. Many will, will remember this movie. It was very evil. There was an evil presence. 
uh, in this place. And of course, you know, this picture here of one of the main actors got the good old cross of Tammuz. You're all the pagan nonsense going on here. But of course, The Conjuring was about paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren worked to help a family terrorized by a dark presence in their farmhouse. So again, more veil blood stuff going on here. We can see how scary the movie was. I believe this was the evil presence or evil entity in there. Again, you got another scary, you know, uh, scene from that movie if it was I didn't see the movie myself but I know that it was very very scary in fact this is something that my wife just refuses to watch and I don't blame her because it is just you know same satanic veil practices human blood being shed another film that just happened to have the same makers as this Balco experiment was Annabelle and of course again you know blood sacrifice all this kind of thing going on in the same kind of movie and you know according to IMDB it's about a couple who begins to experience terrifying supernatural occurrences involving a vintage doll shortly after their home is invaded by satanic cultists so basically even if you look at the poster you see the blood coming down from the girl or the doll's eyes so really and again the, the, before the conjuring there was Annabelle now I'm not sure possibly this doll had a little role in the movie the conjuring itself maybe this is a prequel or a spin-off of that movie so any of you could please feel free to comment and let me know that but I never seen these two movies so but again depicting human blood sacrifice and all that kind of stuff going on so it's not any surprise that this movie the Balco experiment is made by the same creators as those two great movies and you know I found this article um, about this particular movie and uh, it goes it talks about down here which I let me just get to it. it says that the experiment is meant to test the strength of these alliances now remember this is according to the secular uh, media okay this is what they want you to believe I believe this is just the play here and they prove to be rather strong indeed the Balco experiment is most compelling in its first half which shows the employees working together to thwart the malicious design of the overseers that's not to say the film becomes less interesting once the mayhem begins. It just becomes more formulaic. So the overseers, to me, totally showing the Illuminati, the people who are behind this nonsense. So Gunn, McLean, and the cast want to show that most of these office drones are essentially good, and the characters' inventiveness in responding to the situation demonstrates that goodness. For all the movie's gory, anti-corporate outrage, the Balco experiment is surprisingly uncynical in its view of human nature. Notably, the film's hero is a no-take-charge fighter, but rather a sweet-tempered humanist. The character of Mike Melch expresses the filmmaker's ethic of community over individualism and kindness over ruthlessness. So, played by John Gallagher Jr. as misplaced hipster, his messy hair, three-day stubble, and often, or sorry, soft line reading suggests an indie rock musician adrift to corporate world, Mike is a fitting ant antithesis to the social climbers to show the little compunction about murdering their co-workers. So basically they're trying to make it as if it's like, an, you know, trying to show that uh, the character of humanity that we're generally good and so they want to make you make it seem like it's just a story. But they know what's what's really fascinating is I really believe this is just more programming for what is coming. Then they go into this other interesting movie, which we'll talk about in a little later on, this movie Raw. Incidentally, Gallagher's star uh, turn isn't the only superb central performance you can see in a horror movie this week. Juliana Durkono's Ra, currently playing at the music box, is as much a showcase for the young French actress Garance Marellier as it is in the artsy fight, uh, sorry, fright fest. Marielle's character evolved from a doe-like waif to a ravenous cannibal. Hmm, more, you know, human flesh eating, cannibalism, blood sacrifice, bail practice, same kind of thing yet again, and she makes this evolution feel natural. So you go from this Balco experiment where they're killing each other to now talking Talking about or you know basically lumping it with the same movie as uh, Raw or the same class as this bloodlust, human sacrifice, eating of human flesh. So you know you can see really what is going on here. They're just continually programming people for what is coming later on, or basically the to me the total uh, degradation or de or sorry decay of human society. So even just from pictures in this movie Raw, you know I'm sorry to show such a gory picture here, but it's really a bloody movie. I will be showing a trailer or at least the most tame trailer. I could find about this movie but again very gory showing human sacrifice showing this girl who was basically a vegetarian and a waif and then she basically through an experiment she becomes like this uh, blood
bloodlusting uh, uh, human being. So it's just complete devil nonsense going on here. And so again, according to IMDb, when a young vegetarian undergoes a carnivorous hazing ritual at a vet school, an, uh, an unbidden taste for meat begins to grow in her. So they want to say meat, but really it's human meat, human flesh. You'll see that in the trailer. And again, I tried to find the most tame trailer and I really want to thank Sister Brandy uh, on the uh, Facebook page for also letting me know of this particular movie as well. But as we get back to the Balco experiment, just some things I want to point out here. One of the actors just happens to be Mr. Tony Goldwyn, and I'm sure you'll recognize him from classic movies like Ghost. But, you know, when I saw him, immediately I thought of this movie that he was in not that long ago called Divergent. And, of course, many of us know that Divergent was a total New World Order theme kind of movie. He played this seemingly benevolent character, uh, as he hears his name is Andrew, oh, sorry, yeah, Andrew Pryor. He was uh, or one of the leaders of the abdication uh, faction, and they were like the caregivers and the helpers and all that kind of thing. And of course, he ends up getting killed for trying to help out later on. But of course, you know, you've got the same guy appearing in these New World Order kind of movies. And, you know, speaking of New World Order, you saw a scene in that trailer where the people in the office in the Belco building were trying to get out. And instead of the guards helping them they were basically shooting at them so they were shooting at the workers nobody was allowed to get out you saw uh, those metal uh, the windows all closing up and everybody was basically locked in there and you've got these guys these snipers the guards you know shooting at the people so basically to me depicting martial law depicting that people are trapped they will not have any rights they will not have any freedoms they have to comply to what this experiment or the overseers of this experiment want them to do which to me is depicting the Illuminati elite uh, Jesuit to Luciferian leaders of our world that is exactly how they see themselves and what they want to lure humanity into just destroying itself and later on we see a, a picture of another uh, main character this female you know that we see her chopping up something and you see blood all over the place I don't know whether she's chopping up a human body whether she's been fighting somebody but basically who knows what she's doing here but again showing all this kind of bloodshed again and of course this woman whose name in real life is Adria uh, Jorna, she just happens to be the same character that plays Dorothy in the new TV show Emerald City, which we did a video on some time ago. Uh, she, we see her playing this almost this mystery Babylonian kind of woman as she's able to transform herself. Uh, she All these emeralds and jewels appear on her, just like we see in Mystery Babylon in Revelation 17. So we got the same character, Mystery Babylon, in this show as well. So very interesting. We're seeing really who is behind this, controlling the world. As Revelation 17 says, Mystery Babylon sits on many walls. Waters, and those waters happen to be people, tribes, tongues, and nations. So it's Mystery Babylon that is controlling the world according to the Bible, just as what Yeshua showed the Apostle John. And you know, we all another New World Order theme here is the fact that they have some kind of chip in their heads or in their bodies, and if they don't comply, then something crazy happens. They're able to you know, persecute them or do something, uh, make them feel pain if they don't comply. This is one of the main characters here. So really, same thing like the Mark of the Beast or similar to the Mark of the Beast or some kind of technology that has been implanted into or uh, beneath the human skin so that they have to be controlled. They are completely controlled by this company. So again, exactly what the Illuminati wants, the Jesuits, the elites, the Freemasons, they want to control society. And, you know, this bloodlust theme is nothing new, even though it can seem like there's so many shows now showing this bloodlust and showing this, you know, shedding of human blood. This has been going on for a long time in Hollywood. You know, people of us or those of us who have been around for a while, like myself, I was born in the 70s. So, of course, one of the big movies in the 80s was good old Nightmare on Elm Street. Who out there remembers Freddy Krueger and his claws and, you know, basically terrorizing so many people in their dreams and killing them. And we see lots of blood spatter going on in these movies like crazy. So this has been going on for a long time. And, of course, many will remember Friday the 13th and good old infamous Jason who comes with his axe and his hockey mask. And again, chopping up people. Again, you see the blood same kind of thing human sacrifice bloodshed the same kind of thing has been going on for a long long time and of course who can forget good old 
Mike Myers and the movie Halloween and the many installments of this particular franchise. Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, was famous for these movies uh, along with other actors. But of course, yet again, Mike Myers going around chopping people, the psycho maniac. And of course, it is more bloodshed, more bloodlust, more veil practices of human sacrifice. So, you know, the same kind of thing we are constantly being shown. And as we keep going, you know, into, into the current, of the modern age or this the days that we are living in it's getting a lot more obvious we have spoken about or brought up this show many times and i'm going to bring it up again because these themes are being played out over and over and over again and you know i've said before that i can sound like a broken record i really do feel that but you know what the more even if they keep showing these same themes if they keep repeating themselves i'm going to keep repeating myself as well and trying to get these messages out there that these are this is no coincidence they want to lure people into these practices because this is what the elites do they practice veil sacrifice they practice sorry blood sacrifice this has been going on since the time of nimrod and the and then the inception of the pagan religions the religion of lucifer and the fallen angels this is what they're all about and of course we can never forget the good old santa clarita diet show that has just started or at least i believe it's going to start soon you've got good old drew barrymore playing this woman that comes back from the dead she's some kind of zombie and how does she stay alive by eating human uh, body parts and blood and all this kind of thing so this is being meant to be a comedy but really it's just not a comedy at all when you think about it why or how can they make you know anyone in their right mind you have to be a completely insane to think that this is funny this is anything but funny. There's so many things that we can joke around about, but killing people, murdering people, eating their body parts and drinking human blood, that is not, in my opinion, not a laughing matter whatsoever. But, you know, this is what the world and what, you know, basically what the world is going to. And, you know, basically you need to understand that all of these practices that we are seeing in Hollywood, in these in Luciferian productions is nothing more than veil ritual cult nonsense. And this is exactly what the Bible, the God of the Bible, Abba Yahweh, the Almighty God, forbid his people Israel to do. These are all fertility uh, cults and you know, this is what, you know, led the people of Israel into bondage, into captivity. I've shown this article before, but I will show it right now. Again, I will leave links to it. But if you look at the practices, Baal worshippers appeased them by offering sacrifices, usually animals such as sheep or bulls. There's a reference in 1 Kings 18.23. Some scholars believe that the Canaanites also sacrificed pigs and that God prohibited his people from eating pork in part to prevent this horrible cult from being established among them. At times of crisis, Baal's followers sacrificed their children, apparently the firstborn of the community, to gain personal prosperity. The Bible calls this practice detestable. God specifically appointed the tribe of Levi as his special servants in place of the firstborn, the Israelites, so they had no excuse for offering their children. So we can see that uh, Abba Yahweh, God the Father, repeatedly uh, could, uh, did not approve of this, that uh, this was detestable practices. So you can see it's interesting how they say to gain personal prosperity. I hope all you prosperity teachers and word of faith teachers out there realize that your prosperity gospel is rooted in Baal practice. And I wish, and I pray and wish that the churches who teach these things and the people who are being led astray by this prosperity gospel realize that they are being led into Baal practices. Okay, so the prosperity gospel, in my humble opinion, is rooted in Baal worship. You are worshiping money. You are worshiping something that is not God. If you believe that you're supposed to have all kinds of money because you're a Christian, because you follow God, or because you you claim that that the God of the Bible is your God, well, then you are deceived. Prosperity, money is not to be worshipped. It is not the reason for for following or worshiping God. You worship God. If you if you truly worship God, then you will obey His commandments. You will not want to do it for your own personal gain. So sorry to burst your bubble, but that's just the truth. Anyways, this these this blood lust is Baal practices. That is what we're being shown. Interestingly enough, the their major blood sacrifice days are coming up. We'll see that from April 19th to May the 1st is the blood sacrifice to the beast. Okay, leading up to Beltane Festival, which they do all kinds of human sacrifice. As you can see here, the Beltane Festival is the highest day on the Druidic witches calendar is May the 1st is the Illuminati second and most sacred holiday. Human sacrifice is required. 
Okay, even saying with Easter, human sacrifice is required. All of their occultic pagan practices, this is nothing more again than Baal practices and pagan worship. Okay, this is where all, this is the inspiration for all of these TV shows. It is the occult, it is the mystery religions. It is the practices of the Illuminati and the worship of Nimrod. This is what is going on and this is who rules the world. And even according to Jeremiah 19, verse 5, it says, and they built high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings to Baal, a thing which I never commanded nor spoke of, nor did it ever enter my mind. Now that is God the Father speaking there, talking to his people Israel through his prophet of Jeremiah showing that he never ever wanted this kind of thing but this is what the pagans were doing these are what the people who worship Satan who worship the dragon who worship Lucifer these are the things that they do so really this Balco experiment is really the same thing blood sacrifice humans killing themselves you know the all-out decay of human society is being portrayed in this television show you know, there are even prophecies that had to do with Israel, and I believe even for the last days, which speak about human beings totally destroying themselves, killing themselves, eating their own children, all this kind of thing. And I believe we are being seen or being shown the signs of this all over the place. These TV shows, in my humble opinion, are completely depicting the end of this age as we know it. The fifth age is coming very soon. The judgment upon this world is coming. The beast system is upon us. The new world order is very much real and alive and is going to be, I believe, in effect in you know full force very, very soon. So please put your trust in Yeshua Jesus. This is all a perversion. You know, the true sacrifice was Yeshua dying for us, shedding his blood for us to, to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So I implore you, please put your trust in Yeshua Jesus. He is the only one that can save you from this world. As always, do not believe anything that I say. Please do your own research and come to your own conclusions and look into this movie for yourself and all the information that, that I have presented. But as always, be aware of what is being shown to us in plain sight. God bless you.